Hey guys, come join me on an underwater dive in the Everglades checking out some alligators. So this is one of the creepier situations to come up on. So this is all murked up. This is all stirred up silt on the bottom created from an alligator or something large moving through. It could really be anything. Not sure what it is yet. So I very cautiously start moving through this silt cloud to see what caused it. Clouds like this are usually caused by an alligator, but it could be schooling fish, could be manatees, could be a large turtle, uh, it could be a lot of different things. I mean, one time I got into a whole group of manatees and almost got ran over by one. But this is an alligator. You can see him sitting right here. So very slowly and cautiously, I approach to try to film this gator at the end of the silt cloud. And so you can get a good look at the animal. It's a good looking alligator, beautiful. You can see the silt settling, and then it slowly takes off away from me. And as I'm watching it depart, then suddenly it scares another gator boom comes blasting in right underneath me i mean literally right underneath me and then you're just in this silt cloud and you can't see anything and you don't know where that gator went or where the other alligator is or how many alligators there are it's always a really sketchy situation when this happens i've had this happen multiple times and suddenly you're just in a big cloud of silt with like five alligators around you and you can't see anything you just get murked out now here's a slow motion replay of that going down. I love the way the silt looks as it comes off this gator as it takes off. And you can see this gator is leaving like pretty lazily, just kind of going off, doing his thing. And then you can see the moment it hits another alligator apparently. See that explosion right there. And then the other gator, whack right underneath i mean just like inches below me now that gator is not obviously attacking me it is spooked by the other alligator and it's not trying to bite me not trying to attack me but of course the danger is still there if it runs into you accidentally it doesn't really know what's going on when they take off like that they just take off and they crash into anything and everything and they have their nictitating membranes up which means that their eyesight is somewhat limited and so if he does run into you probably it's going to bounce off of you and take off and keep on going but it could also latch on and bite you because it's afraid it's just taking off and it's afraid of what's going on around it and it can't really see well so it is definitely a dangerous situation i've had that happen and literally had an alligator go between my legs like right between both of my legs before so always really fun when that happens okay but here you can see uh back to actually what we're doing we're just kind of exploring right here having a look around there's so much beautiful life in the everglades that most people never see since if you're up on the surface you'll never see what's going on down below but i do recommend you stay on the surface don't get me wrong but below the surface there are so many cool kinds of fish and in this area this is kind of a coastal section of the everglades and so there's mangroves there are freshwater and saltwater species here we have a peninsular cooter hanging out in these mangrove roots roots and then we're checking out the top of the mangroves here and then after i look up there i make sure i look down make sure there's nothing going on no alligators to the right look to the left and there's an alligator <laughs> okay now this is a smaller gator you can see it just settled in you see the silt around it so it must have just swam over and settled down right here this one has kind of a crooked jaw likely from an injury from another alligator and then it swims off away again and uh, they're just so cool the way that they swim through the water so effortlessly and they just glide along now if you You've noticed a lot of the alligators like to hang out underneath the trees so under this mangrove i saw a lot of stirred up silt so i went down and checked it out and here we have another alligator i couldn't see his face it was just the tail sticking out of the silt cloud so we didn't get a very good look at that one but here we can see what the surface activity was like it's a very rainy day kind of a crappy day up top but down below having a great time here's another alligator hanging out over here on this dive we probably saw around 20 alligators alone now this one takes off again and just it's so cool i just it never gets old to me like i've been doing this for many many years it never gets old watching them swim off under this mangrove was special there were two alligators hanging out side by side so there's the one and then there's the second one right behind it so alligators are not nearly as territorial as people often think and when i'm out in the wild i usually see them hanging out together now these two were really close together underneath these mangrove roots now here we can see some alligator tracks in the mud. And so this is an indicator that I watch out for to know if I'm in an area where they might be. Sometimes we'll go for like 10, 15 minutes without seeing any alligators at all. And obviously I'm not showing that much in this video because it makes it boring. But uh, a lot of the time you don't see any and then suddenly you'll see some tracks like that. And then there's just a bunch of gators in one spot. Now here are some Florida gar, there's a turtle up there. And so a lot of these fish hang out around the mangrove prop roots. And that makes a great refuge for them 
them to be able to hide. And, you know, again, the alligators like to hang out below that. Here's some largemouth bass as well hanging out in their roots too. So they're going to try to hunt the smaller fish taking refuge up in those roots. Now, this spot is in a coastal area, so we do have a mix of fresh and saltwater organisms, although this is kind of closer to being mainly fresh. Now, down here, we have another peninsular cooter hanging out on the bottom. And in this area, we have a lot of freshwater turtles. I have seen some tarpon and ladyfish in here too, so we did get some saltwater representation, but it's mainly freshwater up in here with a lot of uh, mangroves as well. You know, the mangroves don't need to be in saltwater, but they are mainly typically identified as a saltwater species. Now here is a fallen pair of palm trees that look so much like elephant tusks. I saw this and I immediately thought like fossilized mammoth tusks or something down here since I also go fossil diving too so it just totally tripped me out for a moment there. Now at this point I do have to give the disclaimer I always give never ever enter the water with alligators. Yeah but Chris you're diving with the gators because I have over 20 years experience handling alligators wild alligators. I've been a professional alligator wrestler for over a decade i know how to handle and capture wild gators with my bare hands and when i'm out here diving as you can see most of the gators really want nothing to do with me they avoid me they usually swim away from me 90 percent of the time they're really much more afraid of us most of the time you notice the emphasis on most i have had multiple alligators come after me in the wild in the water like this and try to literally rip my head off my shoulders and what do i do when they do that i turn around and grab them by the jaws before the jaws grab my skull if you don't think you have the ability to do that or and you don't have the experience to be able to do that which 99.9% .9 of people don't you should never be in this water okay i really can't emphasize this enough never enter the water where alligators are present most of the time they're chill but they will come after you on occasion now here i go to come up and surface and as soon as i do the first thing i do is look around make sure there's not an alligator behind me stalking me yep that happens too and give a good quick look around to make sure nobody's up on the surface trying to hunt me then I come up on another alligator hanging out on the bottom. And uh, this one's a decent sized gator, maybe about eight feet long. But what made this one really cool is as we come in for a closer look, you'll notice he's got really big teeth. I mean, they all have big teeth, don't get me wrong. But this one actually has unusually large teeth for an alligator. They're not like, like cartoonishly huge, but they're bigger than they normally are. I then came up to the surface and I almost missed this moment. This one took off right below me. Okay, so that was a very, very quick interaction. I barely even got it on film, but pretty cool. And then this is a turtle taking off. And I just want to include this clip to show how easy it is to mistake that for maybe a smaller alligator with that silt trill going off into the distance. And then we keep on looking around and I found an alligator jawbone piece. And this looks like maybe about a five foot alligator. It's completely crushed and it looks kind of old. This is probably a result of cannibalism with the amount of alligators in this area it's a very dense population and an alligator this size was probably crushed up and eaten by another alligator i then come up on another soft shell turtle and if you think turtles are slow wait till you see them in the water because watch this one cruising along no big deal and then boom puts it on the gas and just takes off they are so fast I then come up on another big silt cloud and we can see the alligator is hanging out on the bottom in this cloud right here. So when you're coming up on these, you never know what caused him to move. He could have heard me coming. It could have been another alligator like we saw earlier, could be hunting. Not really sure, but this one was just hanging out on the bottom, completely motionless after it had just settled down in this spot. And then we just moved on and left him to do his thing. Now, you're probably at this point very surprised that none of the alligators attack me. They don't normally see humans as prey. But when you're swimming along and they're on the surface, you know, my head is just barely sticking up on the surface. That's all they see, and their eyes only about an inch above the surface when they're on the surface. So what that means from that perspective, they only see the top of your head floating along. You are a funny looking duck and they will come after that. And so they're not attacking a human, they're attacking what they perceive to be as a small animal on the surface. This is what makes swimming with alligators so incredibly dangerous. I've even had small ones, five foot alligators come for me like this. And a five foot gator is like, that's a joke, that's a little guy. But if you don't see it coming, it grabs your head and shakes, it'll snap your neck and you're dead. So that's why swimming with them is so incredibly dangerous because they perceive the top of your head as a small animal not that they're trying to attack an adult human, but they're attacking that small thing that they see. So this is where, again, I reiterate, never enter the water where alligators are present. Now, I do get a lot of people who are photographers, videographers, they want to come out and do this. They're like, dude, I want to go out there for the adventure. I want to join you. How do I get to do that? 
and I don't bring people out. I don't. And what I tell people is uh, the only people I go with are people that I know that I've trained that know how to handle alligators. And what I really tell people is I don't go with anybody who I would feel bad if they get killed. I know that sounds weird and dramatic, and of course I'm going to feel bad if anybody dies. I don't mean it like that. What I mean is somebody I would feel personally responsible for the entire time who doesn't have a skill set to be able to handle when things go south. Whoever you're with has to be able to handle things on their own because if it does go south, I will not be able to get to you in time to save your life in the wild like this. So I only go out with people that I know are able to handle themselves. Now, even if you do not handle yourself, it's still very dangerous. It's very dangerous for me, even with my many years of experience. Anybody I'm out there with, it is very dangerous for anybody. I, it doesn't matter who you are. Even with years, decades of experience, you can still get killed. But like on this day, I was out there with my friends, uh, Kevin and George, and they are both experienced in handling alligators. I trained both of them myself, and so they know what they're doing, and they are capable. But I would never go out there with anybody who's not capable. And again, I wouldn't go out there with anybody who I would feel personally responsible for their life if they get killed, because let's be honest, this is very dangerous, and there's a pretty high probability that could happen. So again, never try this on your own, and never enter the water where alligators are present.